Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. I'm Caleb Nauer, and this is Tassos Haliexu. What's going on, my man? Hey, what's happening, Caleb? Not uh, not too much, you know. We're uh, at the coming to the end of the year now, so things are kind of winding down, chilling out a little bit, and uh, so it's nice, nice transition. Hopefully, a nice slide home uh, to the new year, and uh, you know, just looking forward to 2021, I guess, huh? Uh, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20. This is actually 2020 Redux version like three. <laughs> so maybe we just skip to 23 and be like, all right, everything's cool now. Yeah, let's just go to the future and let's just act like it's 2023 people be like what are you talking about dude that's not there I'll be like yeah you know you know there's 16 by 16 radios with ax plus modulation and all this other stuff and whatever it'd be like what but you missed hyper covid <laughs> <laughs> don't don't even go there man sweep that one under the rug yeah, exactly. So, but it's been a busy year, uh, and I thought what we would do is just kind of give a quick year in review, talk about the things that we've done with products, the uh, shows, the podcasts, and some of our other educational outreaches and stuff like that. But before we jump into that, Tassos, give the good people their call to action. Absolutely. Don't forget to like, listen, and subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube or anywhere you download and listen to your audio podcasts like Spotify, Google, and Apple. Cool, cool. So let's take a look back over a year. Doodly, 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 doodly. <laughs> <laughs> Phase Wayne's World. <laughs> Wayne's World. Um, anyways, so this year has been a big year for us. Of course, mine didn't actually start until April. So April 1st, again, like I said, so far it seems to be panning out. Didn't know, you know, April 1st is kind of a dubious start day. But we're like, eh, let's give it a shot. What, what a joke. <laughs> By the way, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least doing Christmas that way I can have a little natural downtime. There you but go. um, yeah, what a way to deliver that. <laughs> My wife would be watching it. She's like, "Huh? No. Is this why you've been laying around?" <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention that. But yeah. uh, but anyway, so yeah, I started here uh, April first, and this is kind of the the build up to the U.S. team. You know, for a while, I mean, for the longest time, it was just you all by your lonesome, just. You know, <laughs> I have I have friends now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have people to check your spelling and stuff now. So, <laughs> so this is your delegation, folks. But no, for the longest time it was you, uh, and then we, you know, Ken came on the end of nineteen, uh, right before all the shenanigans happened. Yep. Uh, so he was our business development manager for the region for the U.S. and Canada. Um, but yeah, it was the two of y'all for a while. And then April, I came on. And they're like, hey, what should we do? And I'm like, I have no idea. Let's just kind of stumble around and figure it out. And so far, like I said, it seems to be working. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Who else? Oh, we brought Nicole. Nicole. So, Come on. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Channel manager. That's so, right. So the highest energy, most keyed up person in the whole group. <laughs> but you know, this is uh, the U S market is obviously a really big one for us. I mean, they're all important for sure. Uh, I mean, we've been ramping up efforts and people all across the, our global thing. So, I mean, we've got a lot more people in Slovakia than we did in the beginning of the year. We've expanded to some other regions. So you may focus a lot on growth and sustainability and improving efficiencies and things like that. So it's been, it's been cool to see. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. I mean, uh, you know, since again, you know, me kind of being around since the kind of beginning, um, not just talking the U.S., but just as a company, the growth internally <clears throat> for what we've been able to do, uh, what we're able to do now compared to when we start and we started, uh, you know, manpower wise, uh, you know, uh, the marketing that we're capable of doing. I mean, we have some really, really good talent now and it's a, a pretty well oiled machine. And again, a lot of it's all behind the scenes. It's really not very front facing. I think the perception from a lot of people is that, you know, we're a lot smaller than we are, but I mean, we've got about 50 employees or something like that. So we're kicking butt. We're kicking butt for sure. Yeah. Ramping up the, the EU production stuff, you know, that team's growing, the marketing team's growing to continue putting out the, the, the content and stuff that we're doing. So it's all been really exciting stuff and allowed us to do some really cool things. Uh, you know, speaking of that, one of the really cool things we did right there, you know, right after I started, they're like, Oh, help us participate in this product launch video. I'm like, derp, derp, okay, cool. What's this? Not knowing, you know, how big of a production that was going to be, but it's huge. 
Yeah, and it was really cool to be a part of that. You know, I mean, we did the whole produced video, or the the production quality on that was amazing, and then of course a bunch of really cool new products. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the new product launch uh, was one of my favorite things. I mean, shit, I'm, I'm, everything we do, I love, right? But I'm kind of biased <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. But yeah, you know, the the, the quality uh, of the product launch that we did, I think, is uh, you know quite unmatched uh, in the industry for something done virtually, right? Um, first time doing it, I think we I think we knocked it uh, out of the park when we were talking about production value and everything like that. And then, of course, you know, the most important thing is not just smoke and mirrors and being all shiny and marketing and stuff, is the actual products themselves, the improvements, the new products that we brought uh, to market and everything is extremely exciting and, and doing really well right now. Yeah, because we, we tweet the, all the mounting systems, you know, for the asymmetrics and the ultra dishes and stuff. Those are all changed to the UVR setup. Really solid. Yep. Uh, the market's really enjoyed that. So it had a ton of great feedback about that. Um, we did the uh, ultra dish completely, you know, reform the next generation for the ultra dish. So bigger, stronger, tougher. Needed. Uh, definitely. Yep. Yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. We did the starter products. So the mm -hmm. starter horn, the very first starter horn, the 30 degree and the starter dishes. Uh, that line's really taken off, you know. I wasn't really sure, you know, where where that was going to go in the beginning. Um, you know, we knew a lot of developing regions and stuff would be popular for the price point and the efficiencies, but it's really taken off here in the States, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the starter dishes, you know, giving people the, the, the ability to run a really high quality CPE antenna device is, you know, just really improves the performance. Really good stuff there. Yeah, and I think um, it can get a lot better, right? Because I mean, really... <clears throat> In the, in the starter product line, essentially, if you want to run it as efficiently as possible, it's really slated for, again, waveguide-based radios, right? So it's really up to the manufacturers to step up and create these waveguides, you know, CPE-type radios that can really help that product grow and, and really, in the end, help the WISPs grow, right? Because... Again, a lot of the devices that you see out there are really poorly designed from the antenna standpoint and from the feed element standpoint of the current designs you see in the market. And obviously, the patch array type uh, CPEs are the worst, right? So it's really important important when you have a high quality antenna like we you know we provide with the starter dish series, and then when you couple that with an extremely efficient waveguide fed radio. I mean, really, it's just, it's money right there. I mean, it might cost a little bit more, but it's going to make you a lot more in the long run. Because, I mean, again, you know, the antenna pretty much lasts for a long time. So your ROI will, will you know, pay multiple times if you kind of make that transition over. And, uh, yeah, the huge differences, huge differences in performance. Yep. Cutting down shipping costs, you know, cutting down the improvements and efficiencies and deployments and stuff. I mean, that all plays really deeply into it as well. So. Absolutely. Service calls and everything. I mean, geez, we can go on and yep. on. <laughs> so skipping ahead a little bit too, then we had another round of product updates and refreshes uh, in Vegas, which we'll talk about here shortly. But, you know, those were the 45 degree asymmetric starter horn, uh, yep. which we've got a lot of demand for the two gig array sectors, the three gig array sectors. Um, what else? Uh, some tweaks and improvements again, uh, changing the form factor up on some of the asymmetrical to bring some parity to that line. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's been a good year for new products. It's been a good year for evolutionary sort of change. Um, uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming out next year too. That's really exciting. So yeah, actually the, you know, the, the, the starter line of antennas that we have both starter horn and starter dish are again, quite exciting for me because it's a very cost effective solution for again, high pressure you know, you know cost sensitive markets and you know generally that's outside the united states but it's still here within the u.s i mean there's there's a lot of deployments that uh require lower costs depending on the competition that the wisps have but the asymmetrical 45 starter horn is exciting and it's really exciting to think you know that we may have an asymmetrical 45 you know twist port version of that antenna i think that's going to be uh, pretty epic if we do that for sure, for sure. I mean, looking forward to I mean, we've got a lot of opportunities in 6 gig. Uh, we've got some opportunities for some different form factors, uh, some cool ultra dish stuff and things like that. So uh, hopefully some bigger ultra dishes. Yeah. Ultra, ultra dish, whatever we're going to call that. So, ultra plus. <laughs> ultra, ultra plus, max pro extreme. <laughs> yeah. So that'll all be soon. 
soon. Um, but yeah, definitely. So, and then so, you know, through the summer, just cranking, cranking and banking. Uh, the Wisp America, skipping back the, the product. So we talked about the product launch. Yeah, Wisp America was fun. Wisp America was really fun for me for two reasons. One, for obviously, you know, it was the first show we've been able to do in a while. But, uh, you know, working the booth uh, for RF Elements, it was a really great experience to get to meet the customers and stuff, but get the feedback. I mean, the feedback from has always been great, you know, and, but, and it's honest too. It's not, uh, you know, just a congratulations. Larry Smoke and Mirrors thing. It's like, hey, you guys do great. Now, you did this kind of silly uh, <laughs> to put it, <laughs> but we, we understand that. We realize that we're like, oh, yeah, you're totally right. So, and that's one of the things that, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed from working here is just our ability to say, you know what? We could definitely do this better. And we do. Yeah. I mean, honesty and transparency is really, uh, you know, a huge key, I think, to to our success and our ability to kind of, you know, tap into the market and really create these relationships uh, with the Wisps to get that, again, honest, constructive feedback. Because, I mean, we see all sorts of feedback on social media for other companies, <laughs> and that's not the kind of feedback I'd want to get or anything that would be really productive. So I think when you kind of create this atmosphere of trust between, you know, your users, uh, then, then, I mean, you, you really start to build, you know, uh, phenomenal products and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, really great. And yeah, I mean, Wisp America was fantastic for me because, you know, I like to travel, I like to see people, I like to socially interact with everybody. So, you know, after COVID and being locked down and all that stuff, it was great to finally see everybody's face again. And, uh, and, you know, again, start kind of getting right back into kind of the normal, I guess, if you want to call it that. For sure. For sure. So we did the, also, we did the, the Texas Wisp event. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot Whisper, about that. Yeah, the Whisper. Yeah, the the smaller Texas show. Texas Wisp Yeah, that was really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. It was good to see again, see everybody again. Um, learning a lot there about how the the states work and the the different sort of governmental processes and stuff. And I think that's going to be something that the industry as a whole is really just going to have to embrace as we continue to grow and yeah. build and compete against the evil empires that are out there. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think that's something that uh, WISPA needs to focus on as well and grow internally, you know, some sort of uh, system for managing that and creating some sort of cohesive message from, you know, kind of the top down. So, I mean, I, I, I know some of the kind of, let's say, you know, coordinators in some of the different states that uh, do legislative stuff like, you know, J.J. McGrath uh, here in Texas and stuff like that. And, you know, they're, they're not always kind of on the, the same page, right? The, each state, I know each state is different, so they, they have to kind of tweak the way they do things. But it's, 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 from what I see, it's kind of disconnected in their overall approach, right? And I think if we, you know, have somebody who can manage that at the, you know, at WISPA level, right, um, to kind of create some message, some narrative and some, some flow for them to follow, uh, that would be great. And, uh, you know, lots of money coming down the pipe for that. So we definitely need to be a united front on that as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to some potential changes there, hopefully uh, come the new year. Yeah, you know, they've got that rack out for the the state super yeah. coordinator, I guess, Absolutely. you know, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of state volunteers, but it's definitely a, a, a cat herding type of <laughs> an affair sometimes. <laughs> for, for sure. <laughs> and then, you know, it's so different because, you know, a Texas region is going to be way different than an Alabama region or something like that. So yeah. I think with WISPA having one person whose goal is to help coordinate all that, it's just going to be leading the great thing. So. Yeah, because, again, it's, it's, it is it's is all slightly different, just like every WISP install is different based on your region. But the mechanics are still the same, right? Uh, the hands you have to shake and the relationships that you have to make and, you know, the kind of narrative that you need to push in the messaging is pretty much the same you know uh, it just has to be slightly tweaked tweak per region for sure so really exciting stuff coming you know down the pipe for uh 22 you know from whispers perspective and stuff um hopefully we can start working some more on the sort of unified response to uh, emergencies and stuff you know we had several instances of of big sort of emergency things uh the hurricane earlier this year down there in in, in florida or louisiana in the Gulf, yeah yeah, and they're in the Gulf, and then, yeah, the, the tornadoes and stuff that have hit recently. So both tragic events. I mean, it, 
granted, you know, the, the, it could have been a lot worse in a lot of different cases, you know, I think from a, a, an emergency or storm perspective, especially with the hurricanes, it wasn't that bad this year, but you know, there's a lot of potential with the weather stuff and everything happening lately. We might be seeing a lot more of that. So, definitely, you know, working on unified response, you know, you've done a lot of efforts, you know, with coordination and stuff on a local level in that area. Um, yeah. Hopefully we can build that up some more uh, and just be able to help folks, you know, help let everybody help each other, help each other something. I don't know. Working on the tagline on that, but, <laughs> but no, I mean, and, and there is stuff uh, going on there. So like, like you had mentioned, you know, for the past few years now, uh, myself and about 20 other WISPs have kind of created this kind of support group, let's say, not just for natural disasters, right? I mean, that's, that's the main goal. We, we also support each other in, in other ways as well. Um, but we've been responding right now, you know, typically to the Gulf Coast, right? Uh, although we have wisps beyond the the Gulf Coast uh, that help out, but it's exciting to see uh, WISPA now kind of stepping up after these uh, tornadoes in Kentucky and, and uh, was it Iowa and, and that general area um, to actually have uh, somebody now trying to coordinate those efforts. So I'm really excited to see somebody in charge of that. Uh, you know, I'm talking with them as well to try and, you know, take the resources that, that we've built over the last few years and kind of plug that into the system and, and see what we can do there. So that's, again, some more exciting, exciting news coming out of WISPA and seeing some some of the change. I think, uh, you know, we have some new blood and some new ideas going into the organization. And I think uh, it's just going to make us uh, make us stronger, you know, for sure, for sure. So uh, we did that. We rolled on. Uh, then, of course, as it always is, next thing you know, it's Wispa Palooza time, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. The show that we know about years in advance, but it always sort of sneaks up on <laughs> last you. Last minute. Yeah. Yeah. Last minute. I mean, we only had like six months from the last show to plan for it, but uh <laughs> Yeah. No, and of course, you know, Vegas is always a party, especially this year. Uh, you know, we, we had a whole episode about that in the podcast earlier. Not a lot of redux there, but I mean, it was a good time. Again, good, great to see everybody again. I think there's a lot of energy rolling uh, into this next shows. I think we're just, we're just adding more and more folks. And the, as people, especially the newest that are really starting out, you know, really start seeing the value of these shows uh, and the, the work and everything that goes into it. Uh, it's been really cool. Really yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I was, I was pleasantly surprised as well at Wispa Palooza this year to kind of actually physically, you know, notice a difference in the amount of new wisps that were there. I mean, there's always new wisps that come. Don't want to say that there isn't. <clears throat> But like you said, I think, again, uh, a lot has been done to really show the value. And, and I think uh, they're doing even more nowadays to improve that and, and really grow the, you know, the, the member base, which is uh, extremely, extremely important. So that was good, uh, good to see, because, again, you know, I, I think uh, in general, there's there's a, you know, pretty good consensus you know, in, in some ways of where the industry needs to go and what we need to do. I mean, there's clearly some leaders in this industry. Uh, and, you know, the sooner we get a young wisp, you know, plugged into kind of this ecosystem of what's what and who's who, you know, the quicker they'll come up to speed. Uh, they'll make less mistakes, which is important for them, uh, but it'll get them on the right track much faster and help us, you know, accelerate our growth and our hopefully, you know, soon our dominance in the market uh, as a whole. You know, the, the fixed wireless WISP market is totally different than the, like you say, the incumbents, kind of the, the mobile guys who are trying to move into this space, the Verizons, the AT&Ts and the T-Mobiles of the world. So I think I think we do a much better job. We have been for a decade now. I mean, they don't do it as good as us. They just have a lot more money than us. And uh, again, you know, that's that's changing too, right? So things are things are really on the up and up, up and up for that stuff. For sure, yeah. The, the state of the industry as a whole is, you know, the strongest it's ever been. And it's always good getting fresh blood in here, you know, getting new ideas and, you know, new ways to, to screw up things and everything else. But, uh, you know, that's always an adventure. But, you know, getting fresh people and getting fresh ideas in fresh regions and the more and more that these pop up in regions, I think the more that the the powers that be, especially at the, the municipal and county level and state level, see that this is, hey, a totally viable solution that could be competitive of in the the industry so mm -hmm. you know there's there's more eyes that have been on us than have ever been which is a great thing for sure yeah definitely so we rolled out of vegas uh pretty soon after that we had titan fest Ooh, yeah uh, which i'm still full 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, we ate well. <laughs> it's been the focus of a lot of our year, actually, how that works. But um, no, Titan Fest was again. We 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 busted that out in another podcast earlier. But that was a great experience. Again, getting to see people, uh, just really getting to know people in a casual environment, which I think is important. You know, the the shows are great, but everyone is just balls of the wall the whole time, and it's hard to, you know, you meet a lot of people, but it's kind of hard to forge new relationships when yeah. you're when you're running that hard and stuff. So this being a much more relaxed environment being much more of a, you know, the goal of just getting to know each other. And I think, you know, it, it was super successful from that perspective and uh, looking forward to seeing what we can do with it next year. Yeah. I mean, uh, Titan fest 2022 is already kind of in the planning, I guess. Right. I mean, we've been talking about it since uh, the last one and yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh light years different uh, in the social interaction that we get at the shows. I mean, you, obviously, you you meet way, way, way more people at the shows, but you know, the, the majority of the people that I know from the shows, you know, is I just kind of know them in their wisp, right? So, you know, at the level of Titan Fest and that kind of social interaction, I mean, I, I know them, you know, their wisp, and I know their family, right? I know their kids, and uh, it goes it goes way way deeper, and uh, it creates a bond and a brotherhood and sisterhood um, that's really unmatched uh, unmatched right now. I mean, I don't know anybody. Um, you know, that <clears throat> attends Titan Fest that wouldn't really give you the shirt off their back. I mean, really, um, it's it's like a big family. We work together. And, and most of the people who come to Titan Fest are part of this kind of, you know, response group that helps in natural disasters. So it really shows how selfless these people are and uh, how, how much they're willing to help, whether you're the WISP next door or you're a WISP, you know, a county away or five states away. It doesn't matter. Um, we're all united and we're all one. So it's, it's fantastic. I, I really, really, truly love that part of this whole thing. It's, it's great stuff. And the food's good too, which always helps. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, yeah. And then there's the food. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a one track mind. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, cool. <laughs> so I uh, forgot to mention, kind of dialing back just a second, oh. uh, product of the year. You know, wow. it's funny. The, so we actually won product of the year for 2020, which was announced at Wisp America. Normally be announced at Wisp Palooza, but yep. you know, didn't quite happen. So, you know, three weeks in, we're at Wisp America and they're like, Oh, you won product of the year. I'm like, sweet. And then we <laughs> managed to pull it off again for the hat trick the third time yeah, in Vegas. Trifecta. So I'm like, I'm like, man, it must be your good luck charm or something. I don't know. This is this is pretty easy. I just show up. We start winning all these awards and stuff. So you're welcome, Toss. Uh, thanks, thanks, Caleb. We love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Just providing my existence. But uh, no, it was, uh, you know, seriously, we've mentioned it so many times already. But just what a great honor. Um, I think it really, you know, it, it's a huge motivator for us. You know, we, we talk about it a lot internally, just being, you know, recognized for the efforts. I mean, obviously, you know, sales numbers are going great, you know, production volumes going up, regions are expanding, you know, that, that sort of stuff's easy to see, but it's really nice from an outside perspective to be like, Hey, you know, people voted for this. So again, yeah. everyone out there who's supporting us, everyone who helps us with that again, hats off to y'all. Yeah, and I and I could definitely tell you, like you said, um, you know, it's one thing for you know for you and I. Again, we kind of see the buzz and we see what's out there and what people are saying. But uh, you know, again, like I mentioned last time, you know, we have a lot of heroes that don't wear capes at our company, and those are all the talented designers and engineers that are working behind the scenes that don't see any of this stuff, right? So when that award comes home and we you know we 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 mail it to Slovakia and they see it in their office, I mean, that's the ultimate inspiration for all of them to create and keep creating these you know kind of game changing uh you know antennas and and other things in the future uh wherever you know the company may go um it's it's, it's great uh the love from them back to everybody out there is equally as much as uh you know caleb and i say all the time that uh yeah it, it's an honor i'm flattered uh once again <laughs> Yeah, especially for those teams, you know, the 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 marketing guys that you don't see the back end, the finance, you know, the operational side, the HR side, just trying to wrangle everybody together. <laughs> yeah. so Why much are that. we doing this? Why are you doing this? They don't understand. <laughs> but when that award comes home, they're like, oh, I get it. Okay, so it, it does make sense. We are doing it for a good reason, you know? Yeah, it, the, the dots get connected for sure. 
<laughs> uh, talking about expanding growth, we've had a lot of growth in our on our channel and stuff this year, which yeah. has been really good. Uh, Canada was just a new sort of uh, announcement, so that is a big push for us this year. You know, we've already got great partners in Canada: um, ISP Supplies, MBSI Wave, TDL. Uh, yeah, TDL, a uh, series of other resellers and stuff, and they've been doing a great job. But, you know, one of the things that we really wanted to do um, is get more product up there for sure. So we just recently announced uh, Double Radius is going to be a distributor up there for us, bringing a lot of product in, which is great. You know, from a logistical perspective, especially in these times right now, you know, we've had to sort of shift some models around. You can't just in time it. You've got to go to more of a old school sort of stocking scenario where you've just yeah. got to park a lot of inventory. You know, it costs a lot of money and it costs a lot of effort to get that done, but that is in progress now. And with more stock just in the channel available up there, it just makes it easier for everybody in the end yeah and there's i mean it's you know canada is not a small country right there's a lot of land <laughs> mass up there to cover and stuff like that so we probably have maybe some some more work to do geographically in our placement and uh, getting some more partners up there but definitely it's something that the canadian market has been asking for so again your feedback has made us deliver to you yet uh, another stocking distributor up in canada so cheers you know we're for sure happy to be there <laughs> We've also, we've added a new Middle East distributor, big distributor turned online, Northern Africa. We've actually had a lot of progress that have happened in Africa, uh, which has been great. European channel strong. Latin America channel is growing like crazy. This is blowing up, man. It's it, crazy. Exactly. So there's just been, there's been a lot of growth, you know, in, in general sales and in the channel and stuff and expansion. And we look forward to a lot more of that in 22. We got, we got big plans, big plans coming. Big plans. Big plans. Man, there's a lot of stuff, Caleb. You know, we when we were like, you know, preparing for the podcast. We're like, well, what what, what are the things that we did? It's just like things just keep popping into my head. It's like, God, we we did a lot. <laughs> we were yeah, we were busy. We were busy. So. I think just just a little bit, just a little bit. You know, CJT. Yeah. This is what we've been doing. So <laughs> <laughs> keep the paychecks coming. You know, <laughs> exactly. So, and I guess sort of an overall sort of uh, you know to kind of tie this up a little a bit uh, we've done a lot of work with our sort of educational side of things right you, you know we, we've that that's a constant thing across the year yeah, always man that's a really busy part huh it really is it really is i mean and that's so much of what we do is education because again once you know how the product works once you know how things work you get that background info then for us it's, it's an easy maintenance cycle because we have a solid product and it just rolls with it. So inside wireless, uh, was a big one. You know, we've made a lot of those videos. Yeah. Uh, we've done a ton more. Uh, we've now, uh, translated everything over to Spanish, uh, which is great. The, the Latin channel and then in Spain, uh, they've been really appreciative of those efforts. So Jorge and those guys over there are just knocking it out. Um, we it need was, to get, we need to get Jorge on this podcast at some point. Yeah, we will definitely get him on here soon. Um, crazy guy, but a great guy. <laughs> and uh, he's got a lot of energy. Uh, but no, it's a great conversation. But he put in a ton of work into trans, uh, translating all those inside wireless things. So and not, just, not just translating, actually filming them, right? So kind yeah. of filmed them all over. So huge task, huge task. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a ton of work. Um, they've done a ton of stuff with the unboxing videos. You know, a lot of times when you see unboxing videos for consumer goods, they're a little cheesy or whatever, but I think ours work really well because it's, it's, it, it gives an overview of the product, but so much of it's the assembly, right? And just giving the visual, uh, we have very efficient, easy to use assembly methods, but you know, a lot of times seeing it happen in, in sort of real vision or stuff on a video, uh, is super helpful. To and typically with unboxing videos, you usually see a third party kind of doing it and introducing this product, right? And they sometimes miss the finer points or the things and the details that are really important that we know we definitely want, uh, the, the users to know, like, you know, in the past, making sure you use anti seize on the bolts and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, by making it internal and taken upon ourselves to to do that i think uh makes a, a makes a huge difference in you know how the product is used and better understood hopefully uh when you know some first time user gets it in their hands definitely definitely um on top of that you know the podcast the podcast here we are <laughs> we're like we should do a podcast okay great okay. how do you do that i don't know we'll figure it out how, i'm like how, how hard how, could it how be do you spell podcast i'm not sure <laughs> spell check that for me 
<laughs> is oh, it one God. D or two? I'm not sure. Is it one? Pass cod? What? <laughs> but we're like, oh, how, how hard could it be? We're, we both talk for a living, you know? It's, it's all good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we got it figured out, though. So I was just looking at the list. So the first one was in August, so the, yeah. the beginning of August. And I'm like, it feels like we just started a few weeks ago, but I'm like, we're in four months of this. This is episode, what, 15? Yeah, so I think it's our 15th episode. Which is your favorite episode? Put you on the spot. Uh, man, I don't know. You're, lo- you're, you're looking at a list. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I did have a list. The the myths, misconceptions, and misunderstandings. That was good, yeah. Um, that was a really good one. I think that is, because we've seen so much, we've done so much, yeah. um, but there's also, we're learning all the time, too. I mean, there's no way to know everything. So I think that was a fun one uh, that we're going to expand upon in a series. Doom. Doom was a good one for me. Doom uh, was I a like fun that. one. Yeah, I yeah. definitely enjoy that one because, as you know, I'm a fierce advocate for this industry, right? And when I start seeing people on social media, you know, starting to push this negativity and, oh, the, you know, the wisps are done because of Starlink and all this other crap, um, I really want to help kind of shed some light on, you know, what's really happening out there and what can be done. And, and again, you know, like I always say, making lemonade from the lemons that you think people are throwing at you. Um, so Doom was definitely a, a great podcast and one one of my favorite episodes as well. Definitely. Uh, we had some cool guests. Yeah. You know, we got Claude for Wispa. Uh, I was just looking at the list on, on episode five. So we had four out there when we interviewed. He's like, sure, I'll do it. Yeah, we've known him for a while. But I'm like, this might be a leap of faith for you. Why don't you listen to the first few first? Make sure you know what you're signing see, up see if for. You still, see if you still want to do it or not. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're still kind of stumbling our way through this. But no, that was a good conversation. You know, we talked a lot about the shows and what it means for Wispa and the OSR's efforts. Uh, we had Spencer. Uh, that was a cool conversation. Dustin uh, last week. That was really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we're looking for more of the you know, folks out there. If you're a manufacturer, I mean, especially if you're a Wisp and you want to talk about your experiences, you know, we're we're going to do next year a, a lot more of these interviews. Uh, we want to interview a lot of different Wisps because everybody's story is different. You know, uh, we've said before, your wisp in in Oklahoma is different from your wisp in Texas, which is way different than your wisp in Maine or Alabama or Or Arizona. Arizona. (laughs) I mean, there's like Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. There's like 18 different terrain types in California alone, right? So, I mean, exactly. There's just so many ways to do things. So, if you're a wisp out there, you want to have a conversation and get on the podcast, let us know. We're going to be doing some more manufacturers. Uh, we're going to work on some of this sort of uh, the finance or state part or something like that, trying to mm-hmm. figure out what that is. Uh, we're going to bring on some internal guests too. You know, we are, we are the, obviously in this podcast, we're the most vocal ones out of the group, but we want to bring some of our folks from the inside, uh, start telling, you know, more of their history or more of their, you know, their view and their story. So, and, and something also that, you know, for the viewers out there and stuff, you know, uh, I always ask, and you always ask for people to, if you want to be on the show, come on, you know, we, we'd love to have you, but I really want people to understand that, you know, this, this show and this podcast, if you're on is not about RF elements, right? I mean, obviously we're from RF elements. We talk a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things that we do, but really we just want to know and talk about WISPs in general. It's, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, talking about our product. We don't care. Even if you don't use our product, come on the show. Like I said, we just want to talk about the WISP life period, what you do, how you do it, and, uh, you know, how you make things better or how things have been worse for you, whatever it is. It's open book, unbiased, just, you know, natural, raw conversation about being a wisp. Exactly. You know, it's, it's an industry thing and, you know, we're, we're open to talk to just about anybody. So, yep. Cool. Cool. And then I guess the sort of last thing is we're getting wisp traveler spun Ooh. back up. <laughs> Uh, I love I love Wisp Travel. I mean, it's like our first like really big thing that we did for marketing. Obviously, we have you know <clears throat> all the data sheets and graphics and we- uh, uh, webinars and stuff that we've done. But really, the, the Wisp Traveler thing was kind of my baby from the beginning. You know, back in I think 2016 we started it, roughly 2017 or something like that. And uh, again, it, it kind of went by the wayside uh, during uh, COVID, obviously because we couldn't travel. But uh, bringing that back is uh, something I'm really, really excited about. I can't wait. Yeah, we've got a list that we're starting to spin up now. Um, we're doing it, and not just, you know, here. I mean, we're, we've got a lot that's going to happen in Europe. 
Uh, we're working on Latin America, some different versions. Uh, we're going to do the the North America sections here too. So uh, I was really blown away, like when I first started working here and going through all the videos, just how many views those things had. I mean, there's yeah. there's a ton, and I think it just goes to show you again because every wisp is different. You know, the end result may be similar, but you know how you get there is a completely different path to get there, and that's what a lot of these conversations are. So, you know, if you've got an interesting story, uh, you got some really cool scenery. You you know, you want to talk about, you know, show people this is how we do things. You know, this is our towers. This is what the inside looks like. And we're not asking you to to spill any super secret sort of stuff. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are really pl- proud, justifiably, for what they've done and want to show. So, hey, if you're interested in doing a Wiz Traveler, please reach out to us and uh, we'll figure some things out. Cool, cool. We have been busy. <laughs> Looking back, it's like, man, we've been we've been doing a lot. Uh, there's a lot more that we're going to be hitting up in 22. So this will be the last podcast for the year. Uh, we've got Christmas um, tomorrow. Uh, yes. No, wait. Next no, week. It's not, I think Christmas know. is not tomorrow. Well, I'm like, this will go out Friday, but it's a week behind. Look, man, it's the end of the year. I'm, my mental math is done. So we got Christmas and New Year's coming up. So we're going to hit it hard uh, coming up in January. But everyone out there, you know, have a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hanukkah. Just the whole array. Just go nuts. So yep. just be happy wherever you're at. Um, if you guys want to reach out to us, you know, again, we're looking for feedback. We're looking for questions. You guys got, got topics and stuff that we want to talk about on the podcast. Uh, please let us know. You can find us everywhere. Toss us at rfelements.com, Caleb at rfelements.com. Check out our Facebook groups. We've got a bunch of different groups, the main RF elements group, the English group, but we've got all the other regional groups as well. We're everywhere. Um, we're everywhere. So <laughs> contacts on our website, just a lot of different ways to find us, uh, put comments in the YouTube, Whatever you guys want to do. So, um, but yeah, man, that's that's all I've got. So it's been a great year. Um, I've been excited for it and like super excited for next year. Same here, man. Awesome. Cool, man. So happy holidays, everybody. All right. Happy holidays, y'all. Be good.